Creatives. More tech. Electrics. Sit plan. ITS is a space for the new generation who are hungry for knowledge because it provides a wide range of references in both physical and digital form. ITS makes it easier for the new generation to access information by providing flexible classes. keeps moving forward in facing future challenges by providing the best facilities for the new generation's activities. The facilities support both spiritual and physical needs. ITS also provides research facilities in the ITS Science Techno Park, including ICT and Robotics, Automotive, Maritime, and Creative Industries. Therefore, the excellent generations from ITS will emerge and make history. ITS is a space for the new generation to express themselves. ITS is a place where the new generation learns new things and finds their purpose. ITS has become a place where the new generations that carry the future will be born. ITS is a campus of science and technology which focuses on the research and innovation presenting technology for prosperity. With a spirit of heroism, ITS brings the future before us. ITS, the University of Heroes. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we start, commence the program, and here are the following webinar protocol. For each participant ID, please use your real name following with your origin of institution. All of participants are expected to mute the audio and only unmute the video during the event. We cordially invite you to take your own firm and comfort seat in your own room and please avoid the backlight. Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the Q&A discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. 
thank you for your cooperation and consideration. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our event today. Researcher and Research Student Enrichment Program for Architecture, Urban Planning, Design, and Social Sciences. Uh, usually, we call this event by Resep. Before we start our agenda today, I will read out the important information to all attendants. First, please fill the attendance form on the provided link, which will be shared in the Zoom chat room by our committee. The link will be closed in 15 minutes. Second, please fill the feedback form, which will be shared in the Zoom chat room 15 minutes before the session end, and it will be closed after one hour. Third, the attendance and feedback form are compulsory for these purposes. First, attendance is mandatory for the new ITS master and doctoral students. Certificate of participation only eligible for international participants who have 60% of attendance or minimum five meetings. It is for STEM for it, which is eligible only for ITS undergraduate student. Participant who is to ask question during the Q&A session Please send your question at the provided link in the Zoom chat room or alternatively, you may raise your hand during the Q&A session to ask your question directly. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to Researcher and Research Student Enrichment Program for Architecture, Urban Planning, Design, and also Social Sciences. Today, Thursday, 14 October 2021, I'm Dewi from ITS Postgraduate Office, and I will be your Master of Ceremony for this session. Before we start the session, please allow me to inform you on our agenda today. First, it will be opened by MC, continued by the introduction to the moderator and also the speaker. After that, we will get to the main agenda the lecturer session, then followed by Q&A session, and it will be ended with conclusion and closing. I would like to remind you again to fill your attendance form shared through the provided link in the Zoom chat room, which will be closed in 15 minutes from now. So before moving to the next agenda, please allow me to elaborate about today's lecture. Today's lecture theme in Recept for Architecture, Urban Planning, Design, and Social Sciences is about literature review, latest tools, and methods, which will be delivered by our speaker, Dr. Sharmini Abdullah from University Malaysia Perlis, and Mr. Banu Prasetyo, SPhil MPhil from ITS, who will be the one conducting our uh, today's session as our moderator. So let me introduce you to our moderator today. Our moderator today, Mr. Banu Prasetyo S. Phil M. Phil, graduated from Gajah Mada University with the Bachelor of Philosophy and Master of Philosophy. Currently, he is a lecturer at the Department of Development Studies uh, at ITS. His research interests are mostly about humanities or humaniora. Without further ado, let's proceed to the main agenda. To Mr. Banu, as our moderator, the time is yours. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mbak Dewi Sartika, for introducing uh, my background. And, and also, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. 
to be our event today about the uh, recept, right? So I will be introduce our speaker today. Uh, the name is uh, Dr. Sharmini Abdullah, PhD. Dr. Sharmini Abdullah, and she comes from uh, University of Malaysia Perlis. Uh, nice to meet you, Doctor. And then I will read about the academic experience. Uh, PhD in Translation Studies, Imperial College London, UK, 2017. And also a Diploma in Translation Studies, Imperial College London, UK, uh, 2017. And also uh, MA Linguistic, uh, Master of Art Linguistic and English Language Teaching, University Science of uh, University Science Malaysia, USM, and also uh, PAD in TSL, Second Upper University of Surrey, uh, UK, uh, in, in 2000. <clears throat> and also uh, she's got uh, academic and professional experience, head of Department Center, Center of for Liberal Science Faculties, Light and Human Science, University of Malaysia, Police, from uh, September 2020 till present. And also, she is uh, she was a Dean Dean Center for International Language, University of Malaysia, Police, from August 2018 until uh, September 2020, and. She has expertise in the metaphor in translation studies, technical translation, SLA linguistic, and also ELT, English language teaching, ESL, teaching English as second language, and needs analysis, call, uh, or technology assisted language learning. All right, so this is the uh, background from the Dr. Uh, Charmini Abdullah, uh, PhD. All right, we're going to our uh, session meeting with uh, uh, Dr. Charmini Abdullah about the uh, literature, because uh, today uh, literature is very, very important part of research. And I believe uh, this topic is very interesting to us uh, because all of participants here, uh, Dr. Charmini, is in uh, postgraduate all right, postgraduate in ITS. So I believe uh, this topic is very interesting. And then uh, to get the technique of uh, taking literature uh, effectively and and also uh, was it uh, and also effective and significantly. So let's learn together from the expert, uh, Dr. Sarmini. The time is yours, Dr. Sarmini, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mr. Banu. Okay, thank you very much. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon to all of you who are present today. Uh, thank you for joining this session and thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to share what I have with all of you. So, without wasting any time, uh, I will share my slides and we will begin. Uh, can everyone hear me clearly? Yes? Yes, yep. we can hear you. So then I will start uh, sharing my slides and we will begin. Okay. Right. Uh, as I think all of you are aware, today's topic is on literature review, latest tools and methods. Okay, so what I'm going to present to you today afternoon is six subtopics. Of course, first we will define what is literature review. Okay, and then I will tell you why you need to write a literature review. So once you know the reasons in having to write a literature review, will try to explain or teach you how to write a literature review. And then I'll talk a bit on reference management. I'll just touch a bit on it, on how you can manage your, you can build your literature uh, review and, and how you manage your reference uh, systematically. And then we'll talk a bit about literature review problems that most of students often face. And I'll give you some tips on how to coordinate or how to manage your literature review. 
pay for your research, right? So, of course, now uh, we will define what is literature review in order to, to write a good uh, chapter on, on your chapter which needs you to write your literature review, you need to know what is literature review. Okay, so before we proceed, can you see this? Okay, I would like all of you to go to this www.menti.com. Yeah, okay, so let me, I will also go on it. Stop sharing so I can, so I will share the game for all of you. Just give me some time. Let me share. Okay, uh, can all of you log in? You're supposed to go to this www.menti.com and use the code. Any problems here? I should be able to see, or you, we should be able to see uh, all of you here on the screen, actually. Any problems? No, just give me, uh, just give the participant time to uh, log into Menti. Ah, yeah. If there's any problem, let me know and maybe see whether the link is functioning. Let me try. Okay. Got some responses. Okay, what's the meaning? What is literature review? So review, it's a process. Okay. Okay, we see references, process, context, understanding, review, and extraction, context, foundation, process. We, we wait for more. Can we have more than 40, over 45 students? I hope to see more. But if you see the bigger one here, so this is what most of you would have uh, written. If the words are huge in the center. So, you think it's references. Understanding, researching, studies, okay, literature. Okay, we maybe wait for one more. I'm going to take just an ice breaking activity actually. And uh, I do 
hope to hear some responses from the students as well. Okay, because what we see here are references. Are you sure literature review uh, means references? Is it a process? Is it a concept? Is it findings? Do you search for something? Does it show understanding? Is it context? Is it just articles? Right. Do we, uh, anybody would like to add? Is there anybody else still trying to key in? Maybe I'll wait for one, two minutes to see if we have any more responses from the students. But so far, with the 13 responses that we have, uh, most of you think it is references, majority put in as references, because we do see it's a process, it's a review, yeah, articles involved, concept, foundation, finding, context. Okay, so um, Mr. Moderator, what do you think? Uh, should I proceed or should we wait for more responses? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe you can uh, continue your uh, presentation. Okay, so I will stop share and I think everyone has seen uh, yeah. the feedback that we got. So most of you think that literature review is a reference, uh, references, okay? Okay, let's see whether is literature review references, okay? Let me share a video. I would like all of you to see a short video on what is literature review, okay? Hey. Uh, anyway. okay. Just give me a few minutes to share. Okay. The audience is ready. Uh, shall I play, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Banu? Six tips on how yeah. to write a literature review first. So, you want to do a literature review for your dissertation or research projects. Not sure of the fastest and most effective way to do this. I will show you how to do so in six simple steps. Make sure you watch this video to the end so you can get a free template that you can use right away. First, what is a literature review? Why do we bother with it? A literature review is simply a critical recap of research that has been conducted on your specific narrow topic. Academic writing is about standing on the shoulders of giants. You do this review to develop and document your knowledge of the field. Without a literature review, you won't know who the big guns in your field are or what others have said about your topic. No reader will take your research seriously if you don't demonstrate your knowledge of the subject. The literature review also serves another critical function. It helps you identify where to focus your study. Let's say you have identified a topic about how teenagers communicate with their parents. Once you do your literature review, you may find that a lot of work has been done on the topic in the United States, but very little in sub-Saharan Africa. This is a gap. You may then decide to focus your study on parents and teenagers in one sub-Saharan African country, let's say Sierra Leone. Or you may find that researchers have focused mostly on the perceptions of parents and little on the perceptions of teenagers, so you may then decide to focus your study in this area. Remember, there is no point in simply repeating what others have already done unless you are setting out to verify what they did. For doctoral degrees, you are required to contribute to new knowledge. So you must be able to justify that your research is filling a specific gap. For research done by practitioners, your literature review will help you focus your field research. There's no point in asking people questions you already know the answer to. So now we know what a literature review is and why we do it. What should be our first step? Step one, search for relevant literature, i.e. journals, articles or books on your topic. Create a list of key words and phrases for your topic. For example, teenagers and parents and communication, or teenagers or adolescents communication, and or are known as Boolean operators, and narrows your search because you must have all of the key words while, or makes it broader because it can include any of the key words. Search for your key words or phrases on scholarly database such as Google Scholar, PubMed or Science Direct. 
none of these databases are perfect. You will find some sources in one that you may not find in another. Step two, evaluate and select sources. Scan through the results, say the first hundred results, and tick or star the ones that seem relevant based on their title. All of these databases allow you to save the relevant articles. Then you need to log all of these results somewhere. I like to do this in Excel. I simply note the date, the author, the title. If you are using Google Scholar, it also shows you the number of citations. The number of citations is important because it shows how many times other scholars have cited the study. The higher the number of citations, the more important the study is in the field. However, remember new studies may have less citations simply because scholars have not found them yet. I have linked to the template I used down below. Now you have all the sources listed. You need to find the actual documents. Some of these documents may be available free on them, that's great, but often you will find that there is a fee to download them. If you are a student, you should now head to your school's database and search for these documents. If you are a practitioner, your organisation may be subscribing to a service that lets you access these documents. Step three, file your sources. Once you have the documents, read the abstract to decide if the source is still relevant. If it is, then save the document. I like to save my documents directly into my reference management software. I use Mendeley and I have linked to a great video that explains how to use it. Anyway, the important part is that you save the document. Once you have read the abstracts, decide on the articles that are most relevant. I like to highlight these in my Excel tool I showed you earlier and create a second sheet just for them. Step four, create your annotated bibliography. Now read the documents, then write a short summary about each source. You can do all this in your Excel document. Also make notes on the study design methods, theories used, the results and conclusions. Make notes also of your own critical analysis of the publication. For example, did study results differ from what others had been reporting? This is your annotated bibliography. Step five, decide on how you will organize your literature review. By now you know an awful lot about your topic and you can start to see themes and connections between sources. How do you want to organize your literature? Do you want to organize it chronologically from older to more recent publications? Thematic, organized around key themes, methodological, the types of methods used, and theoretical, the theories and models used. Step six, write the literature review using the information in your annotated bibliography, organized in the way that you have chosen. Make sure it has an introduction, main body, and conclusion. That's it, you have written your literature review. So on how to write a literature review, So, should we play, play the video or I, I will proceed with my slides, okay? We'll play the quiz a bit later, okay? So, I hope you all had a, a sort of a very uh, simple overview of what a literature review is about and how do you go around it, how do you develop your own literature review for your own research, for your own thesis, for your own proposals, okay? Right, let me share my slides again, okay? Everybody's a bit silent. So, uh, uh, actually, I do like interactivity with the uh, audience, but never mind. So just now when we did, uh, when I wanted to see uh, how, what did most of you think or how you all actually define literature review, most of you actually uh, stated that it is um, references. And then I saw some said it's, uh, you know, it, it has to do, uh, it's a process, it's a review. Okay, and these are correct. Okay, literature review is actually a process. Okay, uh, it's not references. Okay, it's references is actually what you have read. We are just making a list of the articles or, or books or whatever materials that you have actually resourced or used in your publications. Okay, so literature review is not references, but it forms part of your references. 
right? Uh, you need to refer to something. Uh, so, so that is, uh, so the content that you read, that you review, that you are critical, that you analyze, and uh, that is what we call as your literature review. Okay? So your literature review usually comes near the beginning of your thesis or dissertation. That means after you already have a topic in mind, okay, you sort of have coordinated your research questions or your problem of the research. So the next step is actually for you to read on it because it, it will actually lead you to your framework, the kind of theory if you have a theoretical framework or and help you with your designing your own methodology. Any questions so far? Okay, let's not proceed. Okay, All right. It's basically a scholarly sources on a specific topic. Like I say, that's why it comes after your introduction. Okay, it provides an overview of current knowledge, allowing you to identify relevant theories, methods, and the most importantly that contributes to the novelty of your research is the gaps in the existing research. Okay, no literature review, you do not know what are the gaps. So that is why literature really is one of the most critical component in any postgraduate dictionary. Okay, without literature review, there's no research. Okay, because you need research to back up. You need you need to to read. Okay, you need a literature review to know what kind of theories are relevant. To know what is the gaps in the current uh, topic that you may be interested in. Okay, so. Published findings, what, how do we define the word literature and review? Why is it called literature review? Why can't it just be literature? Okay, why your chapter two has to be called literature review? Okay, published findings is what you read, okay, in order to write your chapter two, your literature review. So these published findings are called literature. Okay, but why is it called a review? Is because the review is based on what you have read. It's a critical what discussion or recap of whatever articles or publications that you have read that is concerned with your research topic. So that is why it is called a literature review. So publish the published findings of literature. Your search is called a review. Okay. All right. So when you write a literature review, normally it involves finding relevant publication. Okay, it can be books, it can be journal articles, okay? Or even theses or dissertations that you may find that is relevant to your research topic or scope. You need to critically analyze them just about reading, okay, of finding relevant ones. You, you find, you need to read. But after you read, you need to analyze and not only analyze it blindly, but you need to be critical. And then literature review is you are explaining what you have found based on the readings, all right, of the books or the journal articles that you have found that is relevant to your research topic. Uh, am I clear? Can all of you hear me? Supporter, is everything okay? Am I loud and clear? Can the audience hear me clearly? Yes, we yes. can hear you clearly. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, so uh, that is a part, okay, which is defining literature review. Any questions from the audience? Before I proceed to the next slide. Yeah, any question uh, okay, from the participants? Yeah. Okay. Is there not any? For, yeah, not for now. Maybe you can Should continue. Be. I proceed, Mr. Moderator, okay, yep. I proceed. Huh? So now yep. we're going to the next subsection. Which is why do we as postgraduate students need to write a literature review? Right, why? So when you write a thesis or a dissertation or even a research paper, you have to conduct a literature review to situate your research within existing knowledge. What do I mean by this? Meaning that you need to know whether your topic is actually trending or is it something that's, that is still relevant to the needs of the society or community now. So that is why you need to read up. So then only you know where your research stands, whether it will it contribute to something new, will it be beneficial to the community 
or is it just something that has already been done redundantly that it doesn't have any significance anymore? So that is why you need to conduct a literature review by reading up on the topic, on any uh, on any references or any books or journals, articles revolving around your topic. Only then you know whether your topic is actually worth doing a research on. Okay, so without that, then you wouldn't know. So that is why you need to know who's the who in this research. What is so important about this particular topic? Is it relevant? Is it, you know, is it what uh, would generate the novelty that everyone is looking for when you do thesis, whether it's master or PhD? Okay, that is why you have to conduct a literature review. All right. So why? Because when you do a literature review, your researchers, your, your supervisors, your examiners will know that you are familiar with the topic and the scholarly context. Scholarly context means that it is relevant, that it is trending. You're not doing something that's already outdated. Okay, you're coming up with something different, something new, something that is needed, all right, in your time. Okay, it helps you to develop your theoretical flavor. How do you know the underlying theories to the topic of the research that you're doing? It's true literature review. How do you know what kind of methodology for your research to get the findings that you need? It is true literature review. And how would I know what kind of gap is required within the research topic that I'm doing is by literature review. So these are the three main reasons why you need to write literature review because it will help you to demonstrate your familiarity with the topic and scholarly context. It will help you to develop a theoretical framework and methodology for your research and will show you how your research addresses a gap. If you read and you can't find a gap, then you know that your topic, you should not embark on that topic. You should start looking for a different Uh, Bu Dewi, I think uh, Bu Sharmini lost the connection. Okay, Bu Sharmini, can you hear me? You still unmute? I'm sorry, you still mute, Bu Sharmini? Dr. Sharmini? Oh, okay, I have to unmute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you yeah. hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, I was on what side? Connection? Yeah, I think your uh, bandwidth is right here. Your uh, bandwidth is low. And, and uh, your voice is a little bit lagging, <laughs> but it's okay. okay. Can hear we, right. we, uh, we can follow you. We can follow your, uh, we can hear your uh, sound and we can hear your voice. Okay, I, I think. apologize. Yeah. Okay, um. <laughs> Right. Actually, maybe I should have, uh, what, maybe it's the office location, maybe because I'm already using my telephone data, so it should be okay. But I apologize now, I know suddenly something went wrong, right? I was yeah, lost. yeah. So yeah, now they shall, I, see. Share, shall yeah. I share the screen again? I hope everyone can hear me. I apologize, okay, for this technicality. Yeah, no problem okay. at all, bro. Dr. Sarmini. All right. Okay, all right. So now we go to the third subtopic, which is okay, you already know what is the definition of literature review. You already know why you need to write a literature review. So now I'm going to tell you how to write a literature review. Okay. In order to write a literature review, okay, you need five steps. Okay. Number one, of course, you need to search for relevant literature. What do I mean by that? It means you find uh, articles, uh, books, papers, or even thesis or dissertation that is revolved around your topic of research. You don't just take anything. I mean, you've got to find something that is relevant to what you are researching on. Okay. Okay. Once you already found what you need to read, you need to evaluate and select sources. How do we do that? I will explain when we come to step two. Step 
step three, once you already have evaluated and selected your sources, you need to identify the themes of each of the papers or publication or books that you're reading. What kind of debates have been debated in those papers? What kind of arguments have been discussed? And of course, what you have to identify the gaps in every paper, article, or thesis or dissertation that you're doing. And you need to actually coordinate it, okay? I mean, when you come to step three, I'll tell you how to do it. Step four, of course, once you already have done step one, step two, and step three, only then you can outline your literature review structure. Only then you know what you need to write for your sections in your literature review. And then obviously, once you have an outline of the structure with these sections and the subsections, then you write, you start writing your whole chapter. There's only five simple steps. Okay. But of course, step one, step two, and step three will require a lot of time and commitment. You need to read a lot. Okay. The more you read, the better. The less you read, not good. All right. Okay, how do you search for relevant literature? Okay, before you begin searching for literature, for literature, you need to you need a clearly defined. Oops, oops, oops I'm in the back. Okay. We, Sorry, yeah, it's running. Okay. okay. You need to understand what kind of topic you're doing that before you, you start finding for materials, so reading materials that you need for your topic. You need to know what you're doing, what you're going to research on. Only then you can find the proper literature. Okay. So, of course, you need... How, how do I know uh, what kind of... Uh, Topic is uh, what kind of literature is relevant to my topic. So you look at your research problem. Right? We have the problem of the statement in your introduction chapter. You look at that. And then you look at your research questions. So these are the two important elements of your chapter or of your research that will help you to find the relevant literature that is related to your topic. You always go back to your problem statement and to your research questions to know that whatever you are researching or finding or locating information, it is relevant. Otherwise, it would be not. So always refer back to your problem statement and research questions. So we bring back. Okay, how do I know? Uh, how do I find? Of course, we know that you have your university library right that you can search in to get the journals that you want that is free okay try to look it for free databases like google scholar okay or your university repository okay in your library okay, when, you, when you enroll as a student you'll be given uh, what access right to all the journals that's available in your university so try that first that's the first place you go all right, otherwise you can go to Google Scholar, you can actually search at ResearchGate or even Academia or even some scoffers. If you have scoffers, you can actually go into scoffers. Uh, you just go into the scoffers website, you can type your topics. So of course, in order to do researching, you need to make a list of keywords. Okay, what are keywords? How do I do keywords? Okay. So you start by creating a list of keywords related to your research question. That's why I said your research question needs to be always in reference. That is your point of reference. That is your POR. Okay? Only then you know that whatever you're reading is relevant. Otherwise, you are going to waste time. Okay? So I'll give you an example. Say your research question, right? You're going to find out in your research what's the impact of social media on mental health among adolescents. Okay, so what are the keywords? So you have a few, you, you need to know what is social media. You're researching on mental health and your respondents are virtually adolescents. So these are some of the keywords that you can actually key in in order to get the kind of papers that you should be reading or the journals or articles that you need to read in order to formulate or in, in order to structure your literature review. So social media can be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or just type social media. These are the keywords that you do, all right? If you're looking on mental health, okay? Of course, you will research on mental health, mental illness, 
mental balance, self-perception, self-esteem. So these are the kind of keywords that will actually help you to uh, find the kind of articles or uh, journals that is relevant to your uh, research topic. And then adolescents, of course, you need to know because you're looking at adolescents, you're not looking at, um, uh, how to say, adults or children and so on. So you have to key in adolescents, youths or teenagers. Only then you'll get the relevant literature. Otherwise, say you don't key in all three. You just key in social media and mental health. You'll get a lot of uh, literature, a lot of papers, but it's not relevant to what you're doing because you're looking on what. You want to look at mental health among adolescents. You're not going to look at mental health among uh, adults, elderly, or even children. So that is why typing in the relevant keywords, uh, it is very important. So I'm just giving, showing you how. So for this question, you know the keyword is social media, all right? Uh, your, look, your, your topic is actually mental health. And who you want, want to investigate on is the adolescents, which are your plus one. Any questions so far? Is it clear? Okay. It's none, then I will proceed huh, to the next slide. All right. And then once you already listed down your keywords are based on the research questions that you have, okay, these are some of the useful data sources. Huh? Some are free. Most of it are free. Huh? Okay. So you have the university's library catalog, which is always free. Okay. Google Scholar, so it's uh, free of charge. You have the journal, okay. You have EBSCO uh, for humanities and social sciences, you have this. And then I, I wasn't sure uh, where all of you were coming from, whether we are fully social sciences or humanities. So I did find one or two uh, that would be relevant to for physics, engineering, and computer science, which is in spec. Okay, so this is actually free. You can actually just uh, what, go to the website and then you just key in the keywords that you're looking for and it will generate a lot of good papers for you. So most of these papers are reliable. They have very high citations. Okay, all right. In the class, stop, I'll call you back, okay? Sorry, I'm in the class. Sorry, sorry, because it's connected to my laptop. A lot of interruptions. Okay, I apologize. Right. We're going to the next. Huh? So now I've already taught you how to actually research uh, relevant articles. So in order to do that, you need to refer to your research question. You need to get the keywords. You only list down the keywords and then with those keywords, you enter into this data uh, databases, okay, online, all right? Okay, so now with the keywords, you already will be getting generating, you know, when you keep those keywords into the databases, you will actually be generating a lot of papers and articles. So then again, you need to read, you're just not collecting everything. So how is the fastest way to see whether the article is suitable or not? You read the abstract. So don't waste your time reading, like say the article has 17 pages, you read all 17 pages, all right, to know whether it's relevant or not. So you only pick the uh, abstract, you read the abstract, because the abstract contains everything, correct or not? It tells you the topic of the research, it tells you the research questions that it's going to use, it gives you the methodology it's using, it tells you the theory that it's using, it give you the findings and of course the conclusions or recommendations. So that is why in order to select the articles after you have already uh, found, a few, I'm sure, you know, when you key into the database, it generate a lot of articles. So in order to find out what is relevant, you only read the abstract, all right? And then you also check the bibliography, okay? The bibliography also actually helps you. Say you found a paper that is suitable, okay? You saw this article or a, or a journal, okay? That you find that it's very, very near to what you're doing. Another fastest way to actually to get more literature on it is actually looking at the biblio of that article. So take note of all the biblio of references that is listed in this particular article that has attracted your attention, that you feel that is relevant to what you're looking for, and you start looking up for the uh, literature. That's another fast way to do it, okay? Rather than just you know, spending a lot of hours on the 
Google Scholar or ResearchGate or you know online trying to get the articles that you need to do. Okay, so again, like uh, it's always repeated, the more citations the article has, that's the article that you need to read. Okay, so to identify the most important publications on your topic, take note of recurring citations. What do we mean by that? That means if you see the paper says cite, cited 243, cited 30, cited 550, the higher the number, the better the article is. Okay, that means more researchers have cited on it. That means shows that that article is a really a well-written article. Okay, so the higher the number of citations, that these are the articles that you need to read and cite as well for your literature review. Okay. So, and, and also as you're doing your, your data search online, if you see the same articles keep coming up, uh, then you know that is the article that is most relevant to your uh, research topic. Okay? Any other questions? So, should I proceed, Mr. Moderator? Yes? Yes, because uh, we have uh, one, one section to question and answer. I think... Uh, finish your uh, explanation okay, so and then. Okay, thank you, the moderator. Right. Yeah, you're Just you're very welcome, doctor. Thank you. All right, so on. So now you already know how to actually identify the kind of uh, articles that you need to read okay, from the databases that are available by using keywords. And the keywords are based on your research question. Next is how do you evaluate and select sources, okay? So you probably won't be able to read everything that has been written on the topic, right? Some papers are what, 20 pages, some are 12, some are thesis, some are books. So I don't think, I mean, if you have the time to read everything, it's good, but some may, some may not. Alright, so how do you actually go about that? Okay, so what do you need to do? Okay, so this is what you need to take note before you start reading anything. Okay, what question or problem is the author addressing? This you can actually read in the abstract or even in the introduction part. Okay, or well, sometimes I read the conclusion as well, that helps. Okay, what are the key concepts and how are they defined? What are the key theories, models, and methods? Does the research use established frameworks or innovative approach? So when you have your articles in front of you, also take note of these three questions as well. Use that as a guide to actually guide you to find what. So you can scan through the articles. You don't have to read word by word, sentence by sentence, page by page. Okay? So have these questions by your side because it helps you to read faster. It's like scanning through. Okay, the articles rather than going through word by word, line by line, section by section, page by page. Okay, saves you time. Remember, you got to read a lot. Okay, a lot is a lot. And then, what are the results and conclusions of the study? Okay, if the paper has that read. If the paper doesn't give you that, then you know the papers are good papers, so you can take it aside. How does the publication relate to other literature in the field? Does it confirm, add on? or just going on established knowledge, okay? So if it adds on, good. If it confirms, yes, because it gives you a strong justification on your research topic as well. It will be where you will use all this as your citations in order to strengthen your discussion, so argument. And then how does the publication contribute to your understanding of the topic? It must, whatever you read, must be able to give you more elaborations and explanations. You find an article not doing that, not doing all this, then you don't need you don't need that article. That article is not suitable or relevant to what you need for your literature review. What are its key insights and arguments? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the research? So these are the ones that will actually help you to see the gap in your topic. Okay, all right. Of course, like we have explained earlier, your sources must be credible. How do you know it's credible? You look at the citations. And of course, you also search on established, how to say, databases like Google Scholar, ResearchGate. You know, these are the things you know that most of the articles are normally uh, good articles. Okay, the best way is looking at the citation, and the higher the citation, the better. Of course, and you find scopus publications, and those are the things that gives you the credibility that you need 
when you're going to cite these uh, articles or papers to actually strengthen your arguments or support your arguments in your dis and your discussions, okay? So again, take notes and cite your sources. How to do this, I'll explain later. How do you coordinate your, your literature, okay? How do you manage it? So the next step is, okay, how do you identify teams, debates? Debates means it's arguments, not critical arguments that you find in articles, and how do you identify gaps, okay? So in order to organize your literature review argument and structure, you need to connect and find the relationship between the sources you have read with your topic. Everything needs to be connected. If you read article A, B, and C, it has to have a cohesiveness and it's relevant to what you're doing for your research. If there's no connectivity, like say you, you pick three papers, okay, that has the same topic that you are doing, but when you read, you are able to es establish that connection or relationship, then you should search for more articles, okay? Because it has to have a continuity, a continuity on the sources you have read. So when you write your literature to review, there'll be a flow, there'll be a smooth flow. So that's where we look at what we call as cohesion and coherence. And there's a relation from one paragraph to another, okay? In your literature review. So there must be a connection. I mean, you just don't cut and paste like, I read from A says this, B says this, C says this. That's not how you write. You must be able to critically argue and connect arguments from three or four or five different sources, different authors, uh, discussing on the topic that you're researching on. So that is why I mean that you need to identify the connections. Only then you can write a proper, um, a proper, a proper chapter for your literature review or a proper paragraph. You know, they have to have a cohesive and coherence. Okay, between one paragraph to another. The linking between one previous study to another and how these previous studies are linked to your current research. Okay. All right, so then after you made notes, okay, then you can look for trends and patterns. This helps you to identify what are the underpinning theories that you need to actually use for your research. What kind of methods and what kind of, how do I actually analyze the findings that I get? You know, and what kind of approaches are relevant? What is, what is in trend now? What is popular? Okay, so that you are, how do you say, uh, in relevant to the need of the time. You know, maybe in the 90s, the way you analyze the same research was using uh, method A, using theory A, but now you're already in the 20th century. Is it still relevant? Uh, so this is where literature review helps you to identify that. And then you got to ask uh, questions and concepts that reoccur across the literature, then that makes it relevant. And this as a continuity, it gives you justification why you're doing this research. You know, when you go for your viva or your pre viva even for your proposal defense, examiners always like to ask you this, why did you pick this topic? Why, why are you doing this? And in order to help you answer this question is through this. You look at the trends and patterns, you see whether it's popular or not. And then does it reoccur now across the literature? That means when you key in your keywords, you will always find the same thing coming up. But you find it very difficult to find and then it says a lot about the kind of uh, research topic. You can go to a life. You find, say you're doing a topic that has a lot of novelty. Nobody has done it before. So it is positive because you are creating something new. Normally for PhDs, it's good, like call it original novelty. But then say that you're doing a topic which is quite basic, but you aren't, aren't, aren't able to find any sources or references. Then you know that you need to change your research topic. Something is wrong somewhere. Okay, so this is how you know. Okay, I'll go on to the next slide. And then you've got to read the discussions as well. Okay, debates, conflicts, and contradictions. Where do sources disagree? So this is a good paper to show you synthesizing. That means you have the pros and cons of any research topic that you read. Okay, so this is important because it helps you to write a critical um, to critically analyze, uh, you get to see both sides of the arguments. Those are good papers, okay? And then see the publication where uh, is it published as well, okay?
okay? Because papers that are published, pivotal publications like Scopus or maybe, um, you know, uh, those Scopus publications, you know, it's very not easy like El Xavier, WOS, you know, uh, it will tell you whether these theories are influential or there are any changes in the studies of the field. Okay, you need to be aware of this. Sometimes they're using a theory, but has there been any extension on it? So the nature of the study, has it changed the orientation of it from as the years go by, you know, in the 1990s and 1980s? So this is where actually the literature review will help you identify all this. And then it tells you how, what are the gaps? What is missing in the, from the literature? Are there weakness that need to be rectified? This weakness that you identify in the readings, that is your research. So this is where you contribute to the literature. So every time your supervisor will say, right, okay, find the gap, find the gap, what is it? It's actually identifying weakness in previous researchers. You know, whenever we do research, there's always recommendations. And that is how you actually also identify gaps. Faster way rather than reading the whole. So you look at the recommendations part. Look at the conclusion, the recommendation, they will tell you actually, for some researchers, they will tell you, okay, I did this method, but it was not giving the, uh, the kind of results that I was looking for. Maybe whoever that's uh, thinking of doing on the same topic and find method B. Uh, so this is where you, you can try this out. Uh, that is where you'll be filling in the gap. Okay? All right. Finding the gap will also help you work out the structure of literature review and will also tell you how your research will contribute to existing knowledge. That's why you ask any supervisor, I think they will always ask you what is the gap. Okay, this strengthens your thesis actually. This is your contribution. This is your significance of your research. Okay. Okay, now we already know how to Okay, uh, how to search, how to, how to categorize it, and then what to look for in all these articles, okay? Then you can outline your structure. So there are many ways of organizing the body of literature. It depends on the university, it depends on your supervisor, it depends on your writing style, actually. So there are many, actually, there are four or five. There's methodological, there's theoretical, there's, uh, there's quite a number, but I decided to just give one example, okay, theoretical, because... It's mostly, most of us actually, our, our researchers are based on theoretical. We look at theories, and then we add on, or we, you know, we always um, go towards theoretical, which is, I, I try to find something that is more familiar with all of you. Okay, so what is uh, coordinating a literature review in terms of theoretical? What does it mean? Okay, so when it means theoretical, means your literature review is often the foundation of a theoretical framework. It means you'll be actually analyzing theories, models, and definition of key concepts. And then you'll actually argue whether this specific theoretical approach or combination of concepts, uh, uh, they will actually contribute to the framework of your research. Okay, so you, your, your research is based on theory. Okay, you use the theory as the basis of actually uh, instigating your research and getting what looking, get, looking, for, looking for what you want to research on. Okay, so it's really based on theories, all right? This is just one example. There are many, many ways of actually uh, structuring your literature review really based on your topic, based on what you're looking on. Okay, it's also based on whether you're going towards qualitative or quantitative as well, okay? Uh, that has a lot of influence on how you actually uh, structure your, uh, your literature review structure. Okay, so these are normally how, uh, I'm just giving some example of different types of research. Now. We all do all kinds of research, right? So some research actually solving problems, and these are mostly on science, okay? So in, they, they see an equipment or, you know, a certain method, uh, so they try to find better ways to solve uh, a, certain, a certain approach or a process, okay? And, and normally for social sciences, we normally do this, okay, filling in a gap in understanding, okay, what theories can guide, where to look for answers, how to interpret findings, how to conduct analysis, and what's the current theory deficient. So when you come up with a new, it becomes an extension of the theory and people be citing you once you've completed your research. Or you can use something, 
Now, this is actually here, the broad research goal is how you start. Or how do I know what to do? Do you want to solve a problem? Do you want to fill a gap in understanding? Do you want to evaluate something that's already out there? These are normally qualitative research. Do you want to improve on something? Or do you want to resolve a problem in the future? So these are some of the approaches that will actually guide you how to write your literature review structure. I think um, you can read more on this, okay? So I'll not read line by line. Since um, what there is a question and answer later, so I will proceed. Okay. Okay. Then we come up. Once you already have your structure, then you can start writing. Okay. So of course, like any other academic text, whether it's the chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, you need to have an introduction. You need to have a main body, and you need to have a conclusion. So why do you include depends on the objective of your literature review. What is your research questions? All right, what's the problem statement? And what do you want to focus on? Like I earlier, like I explained earlier. Okay, what's the purpose? Are you, are you solving a problem? Are you filling in a gap? Are you evaluating something? Are you improving something? Are you resolving a conflict? That will actually shape your introduction, your main body and conclusion. Okay. So then, it also depends on the length. Okay, of course, if your literature review is going to be 40, 50, 60 pages, then you will have to divide it into sub-sections. So how you can divide it according to subheading? I'm just giving an example. It can be based on team, time period, or historical approach. Anything. I mean, it's up to you how you actually coordinate your sub-sections for your literature review with the guidance of your supervisor, of course. All right? In your conclusion part, of course, you just need to summarize the key findings that you have in the literature and emphasize the significance. Okay, so your readings of your previous studies will actually help you uh, summarize now what you have discovered. Okay, the relevance, the gap, and so on. Okay, and why this research is so important? Why are you using this research for your master's or PhD? Okay, so we already covered the five steps. So I'll proceed now. How do you actually manage those files and files of what uh, journals and articles that you have read? Okay, so of course, uh, now we have uh, systems. Okay, and I think I hope I think most of you are familiar with Mandalay. Okay, Mandalay normally is quite suitable for those having using quantitative, right? Okay, but if you're doing qualitative studies, then you should go for Atlas TI. Okay, Mandalay is so suitable. Qualitative, you don't need to have a lot of calculations, but you need to analyze text. Okay, if you're doing content analysis, then you should use Atlas TI to help you manage or build your uh, review catalog, the biblio catalog. Okay. If you're doing uh, quantitative, then you use Mandalay. But if you're doing content analysis, discourse analysis, things where you need to be, you know, you're reviewing on content, then you use Atlas TI. It's a very good way to actually coordinate your, um, what you're found. You want to help you analyze your findings. It's a very organized way. I think this one would be uh, how to do it, then we need to have another session on how to go about, on how, having to learn how to actually uh, learn to use Atlas TI or Mandalay. Okay. Or if you're not so familiar with uh, Mandalay or you, you don't have the time or you find it difficult, you can just use a simple Excel to build your literature catalog. How do you do it? Okay. Okay, normally, when you read any papers, right? Make sure you you keep note of it, so you can use Word or Excel. Okay, so later on you can transfer straight for your video. You can even your citations can even have a section on citations as well. So normally this is what I do with my students as well. I always give them a template when I first see them during first or two uh, meets with my uh, students. I tell them to read like five or ten articles before every uh, consultation. So for every article, they need to take. They need to write down the source, where, which year, all right? 
And then for me, I actually ask them to even have the date as well. When did they read this article? Okay, so you have the date, you have the topic, the article, the, and then I, because you need to know whether the article is actually relevant or not. So I ask them to actually look at three things. Okay, what are the arguments that you can find? So they need to read and they need to put it in notes because this will help you actually in coordinating or structuring your literature review. And if there are any supporting evidence, any sample, any methods, what are the strengths, what are the limitations, what are the significance of the study? And of course, what's the gap? Some articles you can find, some articles you can't, but you jot down every article that you have read because this will come in handy during your video, during your discussion, when you need to do corrections. Uh, so, if you, whereas Mandali and LSTI, if you read the article, you can actually download it straight away into the system. So, it already has that uh, data for you. It saves a lot of time, but if you're not a tech savvy person, then you, you, you're more a bit, uh, how to say, a bit old fashioned, then you can use Word and Excel like this. You come up with tables and then you just fill in. So, as you read every article, you just jot down. Okay? And keep this until the end of your research. Once your thesis is already uh, submitted for YWA, you still keep it until the corrections is done. Then you can dispose of it. It comes in very handy. So whether or not the article is relevant or not, I make my students draw down everything. Okay? Because everything that you read does have its contribution towards it. It's just whether it's more significant or less significant, more relevant or less relevant. Okay? And what are the problems that we face when we do literature review? Okay, these are some, right? Sometimes you find it hard to organize uh, into papers around the kind of issues that you're looking for. Okay, like I say, you may not find papers that are good, that, that tell you what you need to know. Okay, so there are some ways, okay, some of them uh, you, you don't see a clear organization structure. You cannot discriminate between relevant and irrelevant materials. How do you go about it? The solutions that I've shared, so maybe you all can read, okay? And then if you're not being, how, how, how to be critical? And this is a very common uh, problem it's among Malaysian students, okay? They're very good in actually uh, getting the sources. You know, their previous studies are literally, so, but they don't know how to be critical in analyzing. Sometimes you see it's just cut, cutting and pasting of argument A, argument B, argument C from different resources. So how do you actually be critical? Sometimes your supervisor will say, I don't see a voice in your thesis. What does that mean? That means don't see your argument. That is critical. When, you, when, when the supervisor says, I don't see a voice, that means you're not being critical. It means you must be able to synthesize. I mean, A says this, B says this, C says this. Then you have to write, what do you think? Normal students will always say, A, uh, A said this, B said this, C, B, and they don't actually conclude the findings. So that is why the literature review lacks the critical analysis, lacks the criticality that uh, uh, examiners are looking for, all right? And then how do you actually uh, identify outdated materials, you know? So these are some of the problems that you face. Or maybe you can share me later. This is what I discovered online. And I can tell you, for most of my students, um, they don't know how to be critical. Okay, that's really uh, very common among most uh, PhD or master students, okay? Sometimes they don't know how to actually organize what they've read. You know, they read a lot, but they don't know how to put the most important one first. They tend to put the less relevant ones, or, or they include the ones that are not important in the literature review. But when you look at the template, you do see some papers that needed to be inside, but they don't. Okay? So maybe later you can share me what, what kind of problems you face, and then we can see and see how we can go about it. Okay? So... It's, even though people say chapter two is literature review, but it's not easy to actually write a literature review chapter. Okay? It needs a lot of reading, organization, understanding. Uh, you need to have a good uh, mastery of the language. 
Okay, sometimes you write your thesis in maybe Indonesian language or even Bahasa Melayu, but most of the papers that you find that is relevant to your topic is in English. Uh, so these are the kind of problems that even Malaysian students face as well. And some of them having to change their topics and so on because they can't proceed, they can't go further due to the language barrier. Okay. So how some of the tips, just a page, okay. So when you review literature, you must understand that it is not a summary. It's actually a critical analysis. You're not summarizing paper A, B, C, okay. You're actually giving a critical review on all these papers and you only pick the ones that are relevant to your topic. And how do you know that? You must always keep referring to your research question or your problem statement or your, even if you have a hypothesis, all right? So these are some of the points that you need to consider when you're reviewing literature, okay? The purposes listed are not generally addressed in all section. They will be distributed between the introductory theory, methodology, chapters. That's why your literature review, you don't put everything there. Sometimes you need to refer you will use it for your chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. Okay, even chapter one, you know, to justify your problem statement. Okay, and review should involve synthesis. What is synthesis? Synthesis means having pros and cons. You don't write everything that supports your research. You need to find also researchers that say something against your research because that shows whether you're following blindly as a researcher or you are thinking. Uh, sometimes they say, oh, for instance, like say Apple is good, now you're doing a research on apples, okay? So you find a lot of literature reviews saying apples are healthy, uh, apples give you the nutrition that you need, but you also need to write, find something that says apples are not healthy as well. That is called synthesizing. That makes a good thesis because it shows you that you know how to actually process the positivity and negativity of your topic. Because for everything in this world, it has good and bad, correct or not? You cannot write something or your topic only has everything positive. You must include the negative because that negative sometimes helps you to actually identify the gap. And sometimes that negative that you read or something that is refuting your research will help you uh, come up with a good recommendation or good discussion. So that is why number three is very important. Your review must include synthesis. Synthesis means you can agree and disagree to the findings that you have read from your articles. Sometimes you may not agree with the method used. So that is why for your uh, thesis, you use another method. Sometimes when you read the articles that are relevant, you find that the theories are not, not so suitable. But So you want to propose another theory. Uh, so that is where synthesizing comes on. You can say A said this, but on the other hand, or on the contrary, I think uh, theory B is more relevant and you justify that makes a good uh, discussion. Not just agreeing to every. <clears throat> okay. Uh... To Dewi, I think we lost uh, Doctor oh, Doctor Sarmini connection. I think so. Um, uh, we will try to contact her as up. Sorry, guys, for the inconvenience. Hopefully, she can join us soon. She's still here, but yeah. I think Sorry. <laughs> Here. I, will, I think I will do it from my house. Uh, I apologize. When I came to my last slide already, and I want to play a game actually with the audience. I think we can do this. I apologize. This is so embarrassing. No, no, no. I think no. in future, the office, uh, I think uh, I, I take note. Lah. <laughs> Normally, when I had these sessions with ITS previously, we were, you know, on MCO, so I was conducting it from home. So this is the first time actually I'm doing this uh, session here with the at the office. So I apologize now. It's you know it's three or four times I think we got cut off. Already actually I had my last slide just now. So then uh, I would like to play a game now with the audience. I think the audience are in right. So I will share the link again. Okay, all right. 
Okay, wait, let me just go to the game. Give me a second, huh? it's coming up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will share now. Okay, let's play a game before we go to the question and answer, all right? I talk yeah. too long. <laughs> no problem, Dr. Sharmini. <laughs> That's why you here. You 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 have to talk. <laughs> make matters worse. It was uh, what I was cut off a few times. I really apologize. So I think everybody can see the screen. Can all of you actually go on to join myquiz.com? Okay, and then enter the code. So then I will see all of you here. So I don't know how many participants should we have. How many? Are how many is available? So let's wait for them to come in before I start the quiz. So now there's something definitely wrong with the internet in my office. Okay, we have one, Lula. Okay, welcome, Lula. Okay, we have D. Come on, guys, Anna. let's join the quiz. It will be fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Face to face, I can give you gifts, but I can't, so we can we can know the winners later on. <laughs> All right, Anissa's in. Okay, finally. I really apologize, like it's so embarrassing having to be, you know, interruption so many times. No problem. Okay, I'll we'll finish in. We have nine. I think the audience is also tired at the end of the day, yeah? We have nine. <laughs> And the moderator can join in as well. Or maybe you can join in if you want to. <laughs> okay, we have Ara, we have Burley, we have Andra. Okay, now I see who I'm actually addressing. We have I. We have 13. Okay, we have Nuri. The students are actually from their home or at the university? Sorry? Yeah. The students, are they, uh, are they from their hometowns or are they already at the university? Oh, I think uh, the student from the hometown. Hometown, right? Yeah. Maybe my internet, even though it's like okay, it's at six o'clock, but internet should be fast actually because there's no PSP, so I'm quite surprised. Okay, so we have 16 now. Okay, do we wait for more, Mr. Moderator? We can yeah. wait, or do we yeah, want we to can start? Wait for, uh, <laughs> First day, or I, four I people, a few more to come in. Yeah, okay, sure. Cody. Yeah. 
Fenster. Okay, I think it's Shall enough. Uh, let's get started. Shall we start? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's get started. Okay. Press start already. So starting. Okay. Dewi, where is uh, Dr. Sar Sarmini? I think we lost her again. I cannot see her here. Yeah, I, I couldn't find her in the uh, uh, participants list. I think yep. she lost, uh, she have lost her connection again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay wait for her to join us again. Or perhaps right. Nabila can contact her. Yeah, Nabila, uh, 
please contact uh, Dr. Sarmini. I think uh, she's already know that she lost her connection. I'm still trying to contact her right now, so please can you wait a moment? Yeah, yeah. Again, Nabila, I think uh, she's already know about uh, her problems. So, uh, participants, uh, please wait. Please wait for Dr. Sarmini. I think uh, she has uh, a connection problem. I don't know why. Okay, well, we're waiting for uh, Dr. Sarmini. You can uh, put your question through this uh, through this URL in the chat box, right? For the participants, uh, you can submit your question about the literature review and what's your problem about the literature review. Maybe uh, the difficulties to find the proper uh, literature review and also uh, how to manage how to manage literature review. Uh, in what is it in the software on uh, and in and etc. So okay, uh, please uh, participants to submit your question here about the literature review and and I'll be waiting for the connection with the Dr. Sharmini. Okay, uh, Dr. Sharmini is starting to join us again. <laughs> Thank God. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Sarmini. Oke, okay, connecting. Uh, belum. Belum. Yeah, unmute. Oke, okay. can you hear yeah. me now? So I decided yeah. to use my phone. I think with the phone is better. I apologize. <laughs> no problem, Dok. This is so no problem, embarrassing. Dok. Oh my God. No, no, not at all. Oke, okay, uh, so... Uh, So we'll go to question and answer now. I guess the game also uh, was interrupted, but you can try because I shared the link so you can actually play it on your own time. Okay, so I'll give it to you now. Uh, we go straight to question and answer. Yes. So I'll open it to the floor. Uh, any questions, anything that you'd like to ask? I uh, need clarification, explanation. Because to okay. what? Uh, <laughs> We have uh, some links that uh, the participant can uh, put this question here. So I will read for you, uh, Dr. Sarmini, about this question. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. One question. Uh, should I read all of the question or one by one, and you uh, want to answer it? I think read one by I read one, then I answer. I think that's a better way to go about it. Correct. Right? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sharmi. All right. The first one right. came came from yeah. The first question came from uh, Fahmi Mubarak from Institute Teknologi 10 November. Uh, right. Which uh, the question is uh, which part of journal papers was the most important to take or to paraphrasing as a part of our literature reviews? Okay. Uh, 
course, in every paper, it has a literature review section. Okay, so that is that literature review, so you read. But if you really want to use the arguments, you look at the discussion part. All right, actually, for papers, you every part is quite relevant. It all depends on what kind of, um, what is your focus on. Of course, for every paper, you need to read the literature part, of course. Methodology and the discussion part and the recommendations. So what you want to use, you look at how they argue, okay? You look at the methodology to see whether is, is it the same kind of methods that you want to use as well. So I don't know whether I'm answering your question, but there's no particular specific part of the paper that you should look at. But if you're going to scheme and scan, you look at the abstract, you look at the recommendations, okay, if you, during the selection of papers. Then, of course, you look at the discussion part, you look at the methodology part and the literature review. Okay? All right? All right. Next. Uh, next question. Yeah, next question. Uh, how to find the novelty because uh, so many previous research about the uh, so many previous research so sometimes a student couldn't find the novelty uh, yeah this is the question is the uh, dr sharmini to find uh, something new okay there's no magic uh, solution to it but i can give you an example how to find yeah the uh, researching on Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, this is what I tell my students. Uh, something that is simple so you get the concept. You need to understand what's the gap first. Okay, like say when you're researching on a model, okay, Marx model, uh, where he looks by on uh, how to actually, uh, okay, let's go something more savvy. Okay, uh, technology acceptance model, okay. All right, this is something that you're doing. Maybe you're researching on something for online learning. Or you want to look at how students' uh, orientation or receptivity towards online learning. Okay, the theory that you will look at or a model that you'll be looking for, you'll be looking for technology acceptance model. Okay, how do you know whether there's a gap? Okay, in your literature review, you will need to find the originality of the model. Who came up with the first model? Okay, now because now it's already the 20th century, I'm sure there will be a few versions. Okay, so you find the current most latest version. That means, say, I'll give you an example. Uh, Thumb model technology uh, acceptance model uh, was initiated in the 1980s. Okay, and then it was modified. The modified version is some of this research will actually fill the gap. Okay, the original of Thumb's model, it doesn't have uh, social uh, external factors. It has factors one to three, but it lacks something. So when you look at a model and you can contribute something, like say maybe the model was only looking at uh, attitude towards use. Okay, what are the factors that influence towards attitude towards use? And then you talk about something that is not there. Or maybe you say, oh, they never investigated cultural uh, differences. That is your gap. That is your novelty. It doesn't need to be something very bombastic. It just can add to one of the independent variable or um, not the independent, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the dependent variables. Uh, that is gap. You need to understand the concept. So you don't go looking for it in the paper. You look at the models. What have they extended on? And you can extend it on them. Or say you are looking on procedures of uh, how do let me give an example uh, okay give you something which is near to my field okay translating procedures i read on theories right when they say if you translate from uh, malay to english you need to use six six strategies but in your research when you were doing your literature you came up with one more which is the seventh that is your gap i hope it's clear Okay, so you cannot really identify the gaps in literature review. When you read articles, it tells you, um, it gives more information to what you want to do. It's what you want to contribute that creates the gap. Okay, you have to look at the theories. And when you study the theories from the literature review, and you notice that hey, they didn't do this, why did they did not look at this aspect? The one that you ask yourself why, that is the gap. Okay, I, I hope it's clear. So I gave you some examples. So you add on to a 
to a model, just one extension towards the model, okay? Or you add on to one of some of the procedures, one or two. That's already actually the gap, the novelty of your research. So you have another version, which is your version, okay? Right? Okay. Uh, the moderator, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's answered clearly, it's very, very clearly, and very, very briefly, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, next uh, we have one more question from uh -huh. Arizal Firmansyah. Uh, okay. Honestly, uh, the previous question uh, came from me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Arizal Firmansyah, I will read the question. Uh, if we find okay. contradictory uh, findings between references, we cannot provide a solution because we are not skilled in the in that field or the information is new to us. What should we do in writing a literature review? Okay, uh, I need it to be rephrased. That means what? If you're doing on a research that is new, it doesn't have much uh, references, what do you do? Is it? Is that a yeah, question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, for, for example, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, about the, the values of e-sport. Why e-sport become sport? <laughs> I have a question, but okay. I think it's something new in uh, our century. Yeah. Can yeah, you like can't that. find any uh, research on it? Is, is that right? Correct? Right? Yep, it's okay. correct. Okay, for... Uh, Okay, then I'll give you an example of my PhD. When I did my PhD, I couldn't find much literature review as well. Okay, because uh, I was studying on metaphors. I was looking at actually uh, strategies to translate metaphors from English to Malay language. Okay, number one was even very hard to actually found, uh, find uh, content to actually analyze. I couldn't find a text that was actually written by a native speaker and to find the equal translation in it's in Basam Lain. Okay, that was challenge number one. Okay, number two, I was trying to find references for my literature review. I couldn't. I couldn't find anything that was near to uh, a translation of uh, metaphors from English to Malay in technical. I was, I was looking at engineering technical text. So how did I find my literature review? I did not actually, like I said, that is where the keywords come in. So remember, well, most research have a similar pattern, okay? What differs is the respondent, is the end part, okay? Like, you can look on social media uh, among elderly, okay? You're looking at social media among children. You're looking at social media among adolescents. So, say you decided to do something on elderly that's related to social media, maybe anxiety, uh, maybe commit su suicidal uh, effects based on uh, social media uh, influence, okay? You can't find, but you can find a lot of literature on adolescents, on youngsters. That is your literature review. Your literature review doesn't need to really match every part of your keywords, okay? So see, if I was doing, uh, I couldn't find anything on translating metaphor. What I did was I found in different languages, in German, in Russian, you can find a lot. If you can find, you read those because the theory is similar. They are still looking at procedures. Only thing, their focus of the end, whether it's the respondent or the content, is they looking at the theories that I was looking for. It's, and I get added because it, this, uh, it, there's an advantage when you can't find literature related to your field. That means, say, you can find a lot on uh, children and adolescents, but you can't find you are it because of how original it was. So never worry when you can't find a lot of literature review. But you can find that it's related. It doesn't need to be 100%. Maybe you need three keywords, but two keywords match. That is already sufficient because you want to know what are the theories. You want to know what are the methods and you want to know how they analyze because these three things are very important. You cannot go out of it. 
for certain theory, there's a certain method, there's a certain way of analyzing. If your theory doesn't match with your method, your method doesn't match with your discussion, you fail. That you can find. But of course, the outcome of it, whether you're looking at uh, different kinds of respondents, the kind that you're looking for, you can't find, you are actually contributing to that uh, body of knowledge. So did I answer the question? So yes. any questions with regard to my... Uh, uh, I think... Uh... This is the last question. Uh, okay. Previous question is the last question, I think. And maybe uh, I will give a uh, chance for the participant wants to make uh, want to provide the question directly to Dr. Sarmini. Okay. Please raise your hand. Any participant wants to ask Dr. Sarmini here? Okay. No, so I think we reach our time. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sarbini, for your uh, for your uh, explanation and listen uh, lesson today. And it will be uh, so. Uh, it will be very very interesting uh, topic and very very useful topic for for me and. For all the participants here, because all participants here is uh, postgraduate uh, student, and thank you very much, Dr. Sarmini, and I will give to MC uh, Bu Dewi Sartika. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Dr. Sarmini, Ab Sar Dr. Sarmini Al Buda, for the inspiring lecture today, and thank you, Mr. Banu Prasetyo, for conducting this amazing section. Uh, please give applause to our inspiring speaker and amazing moderator by using the Zoom chat, uh, Zoom action feature for today's empowering session. As a token of appreciation, I would like to present a certificate for our honorable speaker and moderator. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, so this is the certificate for Dr. Sarmini Abdullah as our gratitude for today's session. Thank you very much, uh, doctor, for your availability today in providing the lecture session on literature review, tools, and methods. Thank you very much as well, uh, Bu Devi. I apologize for the so many uh, internet connection destruction. Uh, I really apologize. So I, I think it did uh, affect the presentation. So I, I only can say I'm sorry uh, for the technicalities that occurred throughout the presentation. No but problem. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for your patience. Um, both um, um, Bo Devi and uh, what Mr. Moderator and of course the uh, the organizers. Uh, no, it was a privilege, and I hope you all done something from me. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then, uh, for the next certificate. For the next certificate, will be presented for Mr. Banu Prasetyo. I'm Phil uh, for being our moderator today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Banu Prasetyo, for your availability today in providing uh, the lecture session. Thank you, uh, Bu Dewi, Bu Sinta, and Bu Sharmini, of course. Uh, we hope we can meet Luring. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can meet uh, offline <laughs> session with yeah. Dr. Sharmini. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know in maybe in Kuala Lumpur or Johor. <laughs> Berlin, Berlin, come to Berlin. Yes, oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yes, of course. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you. Inshallah. Um thank you uh, again Dr. Sarmini and Mr. Banu. Now before we part, I would like to uh, inform you about our uh, our activity with uh Academic Writing Center, uh, ITS have this writing center recently and we do have many workshops which 
you can uh, take as well. So there are two workshops. The first one is paraphrasing citation and plagiarism. And the second one is how to write a good abstract. This is free, but you have to register first. And then uh, hopefully this can improve your uh, academic writing skill as well. This is free for postgraduate student at the moment. Also lecturer, Dewi, not only postgraduate student. <laughs> oh yeah, and also lecturer. Then as well. I can join in as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you join, a, you join as, as a speaker. <laughs> you join as cannot speaker. <laughs> okay, so next one. Uh, okay, so next one we have also activity for let's study abroad in October. It will be uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. and then uh it's open for all uh, ITS students as well. So I hope you can join because usually like study abroad uh, will provide you with lots of experience, not only like intercultural, but sometimes it provides you with uh, some experience with related to employability. So uh, I think this is very good for you guys. And then... Before we part, I would like to inform you uh, that we still have future agenda on recept for, arch for architecture, urban planning, design, and social sciences stream, which will be conducted on 28 October 2021 with speaker Dr. Princess Zarla Raguidin from Far Eastern University, the Philippines. Uh, you can see it on the poster we are showing you right now, and you can check it out on ITS Global Engagement website. So before we end today's session, I would like to invite all participants to take a group photo. So I hope you can open your camera at, uh, now. Please uh, open your camera so we can have a group uh, photo. I will make a countdown and then uh, I hope you can put your best smile. Okay. Yes. Okay. Not a grumpy smile. Best <laughs> smile. Okay. Uh, so it will be short because this is only like through slide, but I will make a countdown now. Okay, guys, open your camera. I'll give you more time for this one. Okay. I will make a countdown now. Three, two, one. Smile. Okay. Now, the second one. Okay. Three, two, one. Smile. Oops. Okay. Okay. I think now that we have finished the group photo, I would like to remind you uh, that to fill the feedback from provided in the Zoom chat, the participant who will get time for it, it is the participant who comes on time during this event until the end and also fill the feedback form. Uh, finally, we have reached to the end of the today's recept and we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience during the session from me, from me as the master of ceremony and from the committee as well. We will see you again on the upcoming session. Once again, thank you everyone for joining the session. Thank you the speaker. Thank you the moderator for the inspiring session. Good evening. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Thank you very much as well, Gudevi and everyone else. Okay, thank you. And apologies thank you. again. Yeah, no, I think that's a great thing. Thank you. 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 Thank you.